Yo. Propaganda. Plan and traffic. I think your bong rips are getting longer. I think you're really? like up your lung capacity. Oh, thank you. Think that Thank it's... you. I've been working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about propaganda. Mm. I've been waiting for this episode, you guys. Okay. So we know we're interrupting our Michelle season. But Tony and I have been really wanting to get into the details of this point because it's so important. And the more that we look into it, the more that we're pulling our hair out and we're going crazy because this is a very important piece of, in our opinion, the whimscog. Yeah, so we've been wanting to talk about propaganda for, for uh, since we started this. Um, so we figured now is a great time because uh, we're seeing a lot about the disconnect, you know, especially with Michelle, who who we thought Michelle was, who we thought the creator of the examining site was, and then who it actually is, and what's really happening in the trials and in the court system and all that. So the definition of propaganda is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular cause or a point of view. So that is what we're discussing today. Uh, in the context of what Tony has experienced, what others that we've talked to have experienced, um, where propaganda like arises in history, all of it. So okay, so really interesting. I did a little bit of back back study about propaganda. Okay, the father of propaganda. That was what he was known as. Um, his name was Edward Bernays and he was born in 1891 and he died in 1995, Whoa. but he was Sigmund Freud's nephew and he wrote a book about propaganda and it was the first time that propaganda was used, um, like kind of as a psychological tool as a way to control and manipulate information like how you said this man you guys bernays he worked with woodrow wilson for, in world war one and then he also collaborated or i don't know worked together um in world war ii with hitler he worked for cbs he worked for tobacco companies he worked for procter and gamble he worked for like I said, several presidents, but especially Wood Woodrow Wilson, um, GE. And so what happened was his teachings of propaganda, you know, after World War II and working with the Nazis, and it was so successful, but then people realized what propaganda was and it got like a negative connotation. So do you know what they changed it to? Hmm. Public relations. Oh, snap. Yeah. yeah. yeah but nowadays, when we talk about propaganda, I mean, we are inundated with constant propaganda, like commercials. I mean, billboards, everything around us is like, you need this, you want this, this will make you beautiful. I mean, marketing is a propaganda to like sell you something, right? Like we are consumers, in the, especially in America. So right. we learned over time over our behavior with each other that if we manipulate or do things in a certain way then we get the benefit out of the interaction that we want and so you we have learned behavior of manipulation with each other right so it's when you compile a bunch of different kinds of propaganda on purpose and then you weaponize that that's like psychological warfare and that's when propaganda that's sort of like the organized propaganda that can be used against like a mass group of people or you know in abusive relationships or whatever it's when you're combining all of these manipulative tactics together and you have like an end goal in your mind that's when propaganda is like weaponized right you know we think oh the north koreans they're um they're surrounded by songs to so their great leader or uh, their information is limited or whatever it is, right? They're forced to look at certain pictures or read certain things. Um, but, but when you're in a cult, propaganda is really about creating a whole reality around people. Um, like a false reality. And so every single thing is used 
to build up that reality, whether it's through a video, through a sermon, through a magazine, through, you know, whatever f- material or form or, you know, tactic or whatever, everything is to make you believe this one, whatever it is that they want you to believe. Yes. And so- one of my notes is it appeals to feelings rather than reason. And it's usually used in combination when it's done intentionally. So when I thought about public relations, because nowadays public relations is probably a very sought after job position, right? It's something that most major companies have public relations. But then I thought about it within the, you know, aspect of the coal organization. And it was, I, when I was reading about public relations and how, you know, corporations use them, I just realized that the cult was using us as their public relation people, right? Because we were used to build and maintain this reality. So they taught us how to kind of be their PR people, how to continue the propaganda. So They prepared us to defend the truth, you know, to defend the church and get all slander away. They um, encouraged us to show their videos. You know, we were always encouraged as the leaders to lead others to watch the videos, right? We were, there were checklists of certain videos that they had to watch. I had a memory pop in that I had totally forgotten about you guys. When I would go to Tony's church and study and like go look for her and I'd try to hang out with her on Saturdays and just being being annoying to them. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea, but they had me sit down and watch a video that was like horrific, like the end of the world. And I remember thinking while I was watching it, like, hey, I have no idea why they thought this was a good idea to show to me because this makes me just. This isn't making me like believe in the church. This is making me really pissed off at them. But I was like, it, it put it into perspective of, I remember think, like feeling so sad for Tony because I was like, no fucking wonder why she is so afraid to like do anything outside of the rules of this church because that video was scary as shit. Like if I was watching that on a regular basis and I truly believed that the things they were saying in it, it was like visuals of, shit blowing up or I don't I don't really remember children running from bombs I always remember that Lena Strew like rotting I like horror like they would use like videos from I feel like there was like music very strong powerful music oh ridiculous so ridiculous but I feel like the video that I saw they had like um stock footage of like old historical shit that happened so I can't, I don't, I don't even remember the context of it or like why they thought that was. Well, a good I'm idea. sure it was about the end of the world. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the point of it was like, do you want this to happen to you? You better like, you know, do anything that the church says to do <laughs> that you don't right. die fiery shadow death of like Hiroshima, you know, right. I think it was Hiroshima footage that I saw mm-hmm. in the video that I watched. But anyways, I had totally like blocked that out of my memory. That's about right. Now imagine if you had to watch that. Oh, Three know. times a week. Of course you guys have nightmares. Of course you guys have PTSD. It's fucked up. But that's the part of the propaganda is that it's that continuous, repetitive, every single thing that you're watching, every single thing that you're singing, that you're seeing, that you're talking about is all about the end of the world. It's all about keeping the Passover. So it's very focused. And so your mind stays focused. And so the propaganda is part of all of that. So, yeah, I just thought it was interesting how that public relations just connected so much, especially for the leaders in the church. If you were a leader in the church, then you will be great at public relations. Um, You know, it was like crisis communication is part of public relations. We were doing that crap all the time and trying to keep bad people out of the church and trying to make people be graceful. So we as the leaders would have to continuously remind the brothers and sisters, quote unquote, about heavenly culture, how we need to act, how we need to dress, you know, and tell them all that stuff. I don't want to sound like an extremist, but it really allows you to get a vision into the mindset of how in the Holocaust happened. Mm. Right. The comparison is maybe like it feels extreme to say it, but not the actual like murdering of the of 
you know, millions and millions of people. But the uh, the mindset of the Germans to think that, like, it was okay. You're like, we all love to think that we would have done something different as a country. But I don't think it is that easy, right? Like, it's easy to say that, like, 75 years later. hundred Right. Years, right. It's a very complicated psychology of what people will do in a group, which we've talked about so many times and how you can manipulate people to follow you in these ways. In the 30s, um, it was called the War of Nerves in Germany. Wow. Called propaganda tactics, the War of Nerves. And if you understand the psychology of it, then really anybody could do that, right? And that's how these cults are able to come up and pop up and be successful like they are. So this is not a guideline of how to use propaganda. This is a guideline of how to avoid falling prey of propaganda. Okay. All right, let's hear it. We're about to, uh, so so psychological warfare is scientifically planned means of influencing people. So, so these are certain tactics, right, of propaganda right. that could be used? Like if you use these all in conjunction with each other for, and so I thought that I would like read off the definition and then maybe if you, if anything comes to mind that like the Wimskog that you have seen personally, or in our opinion, I'm using quotes of don't say yeah. a-holes. Yeah. In our opinion, Wimskog has used maybe a version of these tactics. Um, name calling. So, um, giving a bad name to a person, a group, or an event. So immediately for me, I think of the Pope, Catholics, Michelle Cologne, Sunday, Michelle non-believers, Cologne. frogs, and wind chimes. Non-believers, right? Like that's kind of a biblical thing. I think all Christianity says the non-believers. Um, not like we did. It's like your church like uses things that are used in general Christianity, and then they like drink Red Bull and then they hype it up to the next level. Because like we genuinely believe that there was a difference between God's people and the worldly people. So, and I don't think that general Christians um, view it quite as black and white as we did. Yeah. You know, for sure. Okay. What else, what else you got? What other tactics are they using on us? Glittering generality, transfer device, testimonial device, plain folk device, card tactics, and the bandwagon. I think all of these, when I look at this whole list, I can see a lot of examples, the testimonial. So those would be like the celebrities, right? So they're constantly in the Wimscog trying to find celebrities, trying to find people who um, constantly writing emails to try to make some sort of connection. So-and-so's cousin knows the mayor. So-and-so's sister is related to you know, Snoop Dogg. So let's try to go and see him here and preach to him. Everything is about who you know and who you can connect to. And if you get them in, then that gives you a certain credibility. Yeah. Like they always wanted to preach to Oprah because can you imagine if Oprah came in and she accepted it? I mean, they would just get millions of followers instantly. Wait, wasn't Tom Cruise on Oprah? Oh, Were Tom you- Cruise was on Oprah. Yeah, so they wanted the Tom Cruise. They needed the Tom Cruise version of the Wimsy. But but Tom Cruise did it opposite because when he went on, he acted all crazy. And then that's when people started looking into Scientology a little bit more because they were like, wait a minute. Something's a little bit weird here because remember that was when he was jumping on the couch and stuff? Yeah. So it could also backfire, I guess, if the celebrity goes crazy. But but for the most part, Tom Cruise being a part of that organization has been beneficial for Scientology. Right. Right. And so that's the same way um, if they were to get a really famous person and if they even get anybody slightly famous to come to any of their events, to come to the church, there are going to be videos of it. There's going to be pictures of it. It's going to be given as a fragrance, it's going to be something that's memorialized and everybody's talking about, you know, to give them more credibility. So, yeah, I mean, I think the best example in the Wimscog for that is the presidential award. Right. So they use that as, you know, to just prove how good they are. 
Yeah. Like, Which is hilarious. Why would the president award us this if we were a cult? You know, yeah. it's ridiculous, but a reason that they're doing it is because it works because there's a whole psychology. All of these ta- tactics have a psychological, you know, reason why they work on our human brains. Yeah. And so it is being weaponized against us to make money, to get more followers, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that the church leader wants. Um, plain folk device. What I've heard this, that. I've heard this over and over again. The leader representing themselves as um, as all of them, like all of the other common experiences. I always think of, I've overheard this many times that you guys are taught um, about father, father and how hard it was for him and all of the things that he had to go through, like walking through the, walking through the winter in his like suit or whatever. I don't know. Like, like the comparison of when you guys were sent out preaching. I know we've heard this story. So they use that like common folk tactic with that of like father knows your struggle. And, um, it's that, he's one of you and like he's been through this and you can do it because he did it and so Mm -hmm. he didn't get very much sleep and he only lived off of rice right all of those like uh all of those things right right and it works and it works and you're like yeah i mean if god can do it if god did it then who am i i'm just a sinner i should do it too what do i expect god came to this earth and he sacrificed and he only ate his little rice noodle soup. So that's what I should do, too. Yeah. But. Yeah. Joke's on him with the noodle soup, right? Oh. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> that was a little low blow. That was a low <laughs> blow. That was very mean. I think that I might take that out because that was good. You know what? We have been doing a lot of um, listening to audio and stuff. And I think that we have been getting angry. So it's okay, Lindsay. It's okay for you to be mean in this case. Uh, I offended um, most of of the Wimstock by saying that. You know, I just, I feel sad doing this episode because it is really sad and it is really scary how easily our minds can be manipulated. And everybody, every person I ever meet who says, I could never be in a cult. I don't know how you did that. I'm just like, you don't understand. You don't understand how easily your brain can be manipulated and changed. And every single one of us constantly, like you said earlier, we are inundated with propaganda every single day in our cell phones, in our Whatever it is that we're looking at, yeah, we are experiencing it in our daily life. So a cult is just a real, you know, in my experience, a religious, you know, focus of that extreme focus of that public relations used against you. Right. I think this episode we've been wanting to do and it has been pissing me off the more and more that we've been like looking into it. And here's something that I'll say. If people don't like Steve Hassan and they don't like the bite model, look up the tactics of propaganda and that will piss you off even more than the fucking bite model. Because these are so much clearer to me of how organized and intentional almost every, I mean, I think every single one of these has an example that you can point to and say the Wimscog does that. For sure. For sure. So card tactics is twisting the true facts to suit the interests of the group. So I think saying this within our um, season of talking with Michelle, people either heard that they had to sue her because she was talking bad about God or that she sued them first, right? That's a card tactic. It's they're twisting the truth to make it like official to them. Yeah, we were always told that the former members were suing the church and there's no real way to verify it because you're not going to go online and look. You know, you just trust what they tell you because you're like, yeah, that's Satan. We knew this was going to happen. We knew former members were going to sue us. Yeah. So they already prepared us for that. And so that's all part of it. Yeah. It's like when something bad happens, they have like a backup plan for it. So that's so, a tactic. That's That's a propaganda tactic of like. If there's something negative in the media about us, they always can say, we we knew we'd be persecuted. We knew that this was going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. Um, the bandwagon effect is obviously 
um, the bandwagon effect, right? It's like when Anthony told his story about being baptized, he was like, I was in the middle of it. I was uncomfortable with it, but I didn't stop because everybody else seemed like cool with it. It's like social like, pressure, right? Social pressure to join whatever the group is doing. Being part of that group has more power than people realize. Tony, think of more slogans. Like I know the we love you thing, like the glittering. Oh, the glittering generality. So this made me think that like summarize what their product is about. And sometimes it's misleading, like eat fresh for Subway. It makes you think like, oh, I'm going to go to Subway because I want something healthy, right? Mm. Your brain is like, okay. And they're like, we love you campaign who allegedly is not connected to the Wimscog, but definitely is. You know, they shout, we love you, we love you. And so it's like this loud announcement. It's a, it's a quick little slogan that sort of sums up the whole intention of what that group is trying to say. Of like, we love you so much, this is the true Georgia. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right. right. It's like that one little phrase has so many meanings. And that makes me think in, about the word amen, because it's used in such a powerful way. Ooh to keep the group together so it's used continuously throughout your day and it's something that you all do as a group and it means so many things it means yes it means i accept i agree i obey um it means many things and we would even use it like in a joking manner like when we're joking you know we say amen like as a joke um another thing i could think of was a lot of times we would say animo Mm. which means like cheer up um, so we would say that to each other, animo, animo, and um, even sometimes say it to mother, cheer up, and then mother would say it to us, cheer up, father's coming soon. Like if you heard that, it made you feel happy, like, oh, father's coming soon, so I can endure whatever I need to endure. Uh, things like that, God bless you, you know, also contains a lot of, um, that was a way that we would greet each other, but that contained a lot within it, like God bless you meant so many things, you know, um, in different situations, so that's kind of what that made me think about. Yeah. Transfer device in order to bene- like have the benefit of the greater good, right? Like if you want to go to heaven, all of these little tiny behaviors matter. And this is why. So it's like um, a control. It's a control tactic. It's like. Uh, oh, I know this one. So this was being <laughs> a good example. So like that's what it was. You are an example for others. God came to this earth in the flesh to be an example of how we should live. So we are supposed to follow exactly in God's footsteps, exactly day-to-day life. And if we don't, other people are watching and their souls are on our hands. So if we're, if we're messing around and we're late to service or, you know, we're not coming to Bible study or we're not coming preaching every day, then how does that make the younger members faith? And so, um, so you're constantly having to be on your best behavior. Yeah. And that's a tactic. That's a, that's Mm -hmm. a propaganda tactic. Dude, but that's why I wonder if that's why they make like flow group organizations. So like they have the leader at the top, you know, like they appoint deacons and deaconesses and missionaries, they appoint these leaders and then, you know, as a leader, you just feel so much pressure Mm -hmm. because all those people below you are looking up at you. So you're constantly checking your banker suit, you know, making sure your nylons are on nice, making sure you have a graceful purse, making sure your Bible can fit inside your graceful purse, making sure you have a graceful veil bag, because that's very important. You can't just be flopping your veil out of anywhere. It's got to be in a nice little bag and it has to smell nice. And then you also have to have an extra one for the sister that can't come. Oh, and then you should probably have an extra new song book in case the sister that doesn't come can also have a song to book, a song to sing. And you know, I don't know where this falls in within these categories, but another thing that I thought about was their bookstore. And how they control, it's not a bookstore. Yeah. So you think you like walk into a room and then you like go and there's books on display and then you pick out what you want, right? Yeah. No, no. You go up to a counter and it's all behind a glass counter and you go up to the girl and you tell her exactly what you want to order. There may be a list of like some new song CDs that you can purchase or like um, 
you know, but you can see in the back all the books. But like if you try to get a book, say you're a new member and you're trying to get one of the more advanced preaching books or something, you want to be able, able to get that. Ooh, they control like what you can buy. Yeah, yeah, they control. It's so much like Scientology. Yeah, I was listening to somebody explain a bookstore and I was like, I wonder what people think our bookstore was like, because it's not like a regular old bookstore like in a Christian church. It's like in Scientology, like you can't buy the next book. I mean, right. I'm sure if you like really, really paid the mixture or something, but right. like you have to eat it up in like increments, like you buy Dianetics and then you tre- and then you like graduate to the next one and the next one and the next one. But you have to buy each one. And that's what it sounds like. So somebody somewhere is making all that money, baby, making all that money and controlling that information. And like you said, giving it to you little bits at a time. All of that is propaganda and public relations. Crazy and um, so, Anthony, you can check bookstore off of that list, bro, because now I know what a bookstore is. I don't think that's a, that's a personal message for Anthony for a later episode. Upcoming episode. Watch it. Get excited. Okay. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So, the bookstore is highly controlled. They have their own, you know, media, which we've talked about before, own magazines. All that stuff is controlled. Even, like, what kind of history books and stuff you're looking at, all that's controlled, you know. I, I think that this episode is something that we circled back to, even though we're in the middle of an of a very important season. Mm-hmm. We're wanting to talk about this. And, like, I was so mad. I've been, like, getting progressively angrier as I wrote out the types of propaganda tactics and was able to come up with examples for, like, each exact one, like, so clearly. Like, it's so frustrating, and it makes me so angry. But you could do this with any cult, right? So you could take all of this list and you could compare it to Scientology and to, you know, Jehovah Witness and to FLDS and to the Wimscog and to Shin Chun Ji. It's just a formula. And once they know how to use it, then then it's all over. And that's what's happening systematically. So that's why we made the podcast, right? So that we could teach people. No, but and like, if you're being bandwagoned, you better get off. <laughs> and you Get better start topic. thinking for yourself because we are not putting up with this anymore. We will not be propagandized anymore. Yeah. Suck it. Yeah. Suck so, it. so yeah, it is infuriating when you can just look at the list and then just say, oh, yep, check, 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 check. This cult does all those things. It is infuriating. We did that with the bite model, but like somehow right. this is more making me more angry because uh, I think the damage is in both of the list, right? The bite model is damaging. I think they're intertwined. They're all together. The bite model is, is is not the same, but I mean, it's all, it's, it's all sort of the same psychology of how cults, you know, how to identify a cult Yeah. and and how cults are created. So there is a new article on the examining website that I wanted to mention as we're talking about propaganda. And this video is shocking and i encourage everybody to go check it out can we put it in our show notes let's put it in our show notes i can i kind of set it up i want to do a whole reaction to this video because this is a perfect example of propaganda from a, a video propaganda that was shown to us so we have referenced this story about ron and diane who were ex-church leaders and they got out around 2012 and when they got out they met with Dr. Steve Hassan and they put some videos on YouTube well the church reacted very quickly and they made a propaganda video against them and against Dr. Steve Hassan and the examining website posted that video and and wrote an article and I remember that video being played to me inside of the church. And I remember being terrified of Steve Hassan for years. And I never, ever, ever like believed in any of his work or wanted to read any of his books because of this video. And I just want everybody to see what they're showing to the members inside. It's very rare to be able to see something that's only directed for members. They're very controlled on what outsiders can see. So this video is shocking. One of the quotes from this video is 
if if the World Mission Society Church of God is racist, then why do we have churches in Africa? Oh my God, that one made me wanna cry. That is like racist comment number one of like. I'm like, are you trying to be racist in that comment? What are you doing? I have a black friend, so that makes me not racist. I'm incapable of being a racist because I have one black friend. <laughs> So anyways, they showed the videos with the black members. Did you <laughs> see that? Yes, it was so stupid. The whole time I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys. The are- whole thing is ridiculous. It was, it's ridiculous. But I want everybody to pay attention to, you know, the the music in the background, the, the music feeling is- of it. Feeling, but then when you get to 33 minutes into this video, y'all, at first I was like, this song's kind of like jamming. And then it like immediately gets really off key and really bad. And there's like this full on song where like this choir is really bad. It's like, this is it their trip to Korea? Yeah. And it's them singing a song about mother. And so like the song is ridiculous. Like the lyrics are ridiculous, but then the singing in the background, like it's louder and louder. And I'm like, there's like two ladies in the soprano group that are singing Way off key. Well, I- that was their visiting group, I think. So when you go to Korea, you get up in front of everybody and you have to sing in front of everybody, okay. your church group. So they had a small group of church people. So they probably had, a, I don't know, it didn't look like very many, maybe a dozen. And they had to stand up there. They weren't they weren't a choir. They were just church members who went to the to visit mother oh, and God. they had to get up and sing. Now I feel bad. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just telling everybody who had the real truth. Like okay. they were just members who came from America and they were like, here, stand up during the service and sing for us. And that's what they did. In this context, then <laughs> they actually they actually sound pretty good then. Right. I thought, like their professional <laughs> choir. I thought that like the background music was their like professional church. If it's the part that you're talking about, okay, that's why I think that we need to in real time talk about this video together because there's just too much to say. It's so, it's so interesting. It is so interesting. Is If you listen to it, and I didn't write down the timestamp, but towards mm-hmm. the end, they use the court case that they, that they filed in Korea against that, um, that guy. Mm-hmm. Jill, Jilly Tark. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying right. I apologize. Uh, they use that totally as a threat where they're like, we won the case because they were def- like talking crap about our church. And that's what happens. And then they like ultimately overturn it. Like maybe at the time of the video that they made. I don't know. But I don't think they've ever actually like won a case against anybody. And if they did, it's in Korea and we don't understand the law over there. So right. They- to do that there but um anybody in america don't let that threat scare you because it is interesting so i hope i hope that we can go through it and and uh, go one by one because you do you'll see threats you'll see lies you'll see manipulation you'll see gaslighting i mean it's fascinating to watch and it's sad now we're going to talk about steven hassan yeah now, yeah it's going to get real intense in the ear yeah, yeah. Like, like it is as a, if we're watching dateline or something like compared to the video that i remember seeing in the church it's not what i would it's not as an extreme of a propaganda video like the one in the church that i saw that was a propaganda video. That is that is a hundred percent. But this was an assault on former members. This was a direct, um, like well, retaliation. A direct warning of like, don't go on the internet. Can't believe, right? This guy who has a PhD and whatever this is, and that makes him somehow a cult expert. You're like, no, that literally makes him a cult expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Counseling, you weirdo. I know. Let's do a whole episode about it. We have to. But until then, you guys have to go watch it. Go watch it. Let us know what you think. It's really, 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 um, yeah, you're really going to enjoy it. Stay tuned. We got more with Michelle, and we have a lot of cool guests coming up. So many cool guests, you guys. We we have, like, a whole season of guests, and it's going to be mm-hmm. fabulous. I'm so excited about it. This has become our podcast, our former members place to speak out and to tell our stories so we're excited to hear everybody's um interesting and unique perspective 
and hear, you know, give everybody a chance to speak out. Yeah. All right, girl. All right. Boom, baby. Boom, baby. <laughs>